Good morning. Today's lesson is 1.3. We'll be learning about properties. Today's essential question is, how can you use properties of operation to solve a problem? You can use the properties of an operation to help you evaluate the numerical expression more easily. Properties of addition. You have the commutative property of addition. If the order of add-ins change, the sum stays the same. So, 12 plus 7 is the same thing as 7 plus 12. The add-ins sw switch, but you still get the same answer. The associative property of addition. If the grouping, grouping of add-ins change, the sum stays the same. So with this one, you have 5 plus, and then in parentheses, you have 8 plus 4. On this one, they put the parentheses over the 5 plus the 8, and then you have the plus 14. So even though the parentheses change, the problem is still going to be the same. Identify t property of addition. The sum of any number and zero is that number. So 13 plus zero is 13. A million plus zero is still going to be a million. So whatever number plus the zero, that is the identity problem. It's going to give you the same number that's in the add-in. Properties of multiplication. Commutative property of multiplication. If the order of the factors change, the product stays the same. So it's very similar to the community property of addition. 4 times 9 is the same thing as 9 times 4. The associative property of multiplication. If the grouping of factors change, the product stays the same. So again, this is just like the associative, associative property of addition. All they're doing is they're swapping where the parentheses is going, and you're still getting the same answer. So 11 times parentheses 3 times 6 is the same thing as parentheses 11 times 3 parentheses times 6. You'll get the same exact answer. The identity property of multiplication is similar to the identity property of addition in that the number becomes itself. The difference is that it's not times 0, it's times 1. So 4 times 1 is 4. A million times 1 is going to be a million. All right, let's unlock the problem. The table shows the number of bones in several parts of the human body. What is the total number of bones in ribs, the skulls, and the spine? To find the sum of the add-ins, use mental math. You can use the commutative and associative properties. So here's our chart that we're going to use. We have our ankle, which has seven bones, our ribs, which is 24, skull, which is 28, and our spine, which is 26. So let's use properties to find 24 plus 28 plus 26. So 24 plus 28 plus 26. If I wanted to use the commutative property, there we go, then I'm going to put my 24 here because all I did was I switched, I switched these two numbers because I know that 4 and 6 um, make an even number, they make the 10, so it's really easy in my head to add those two numbers together and then this one. Now, if I want to use the associative property, okay, sorry about the writing there, then I'm going to put my 26 here because I'm going to group, like I said up there, the 24 and the 26, and I know that's going to be 50, because 6 and 4 is 10, I've got my 220s making it easy for 50. And it just makes it easier now for me to add 28 and 50, which is going to give me 78. So there are 78 bones in ribs, the skull, and the spine. Distributive property. So multiply a sum by the number is the same as multiplying each add-in by the number and then adding the products. So for example, if I have the 7 plus the 9 and I'm multiplying all that times the 5, I could say 5 times 7 and 5 times 9 gives me the same thing. So I have 5 times 7, 5 times 9, and then I would add those two together. So the distributive property can also be used with multiplication and subtraction. For example, 2 times uh, the 10 minus 8 is the same thing as saying 2 times 10, right there, and 2 times 8, and then subtracting what you get from both of those numbers. So in this next case, I have 8 times 59. Well, I could break this 59 up and use a distributive property. And I could break it up into 50, and I could break it up into 9, because that would make it pretty easy to fill out. So let's put my 50 here. So then that means I have 8 times 50, and then I'm going to have 8 times 9. And it just makes it a little bit easier to solve. Because 8 times 9 is going to give me 72, and 8 times 50 is going to give me 400. So now when I add them together, I get 472. 
it's just easier sometimes than actually multiplying it all the way out to break it apart in those easy numbers. So in other ways, I can use subtraction. So I have 8 times 59, then I have 8 times, well, 59 is close to 60, right? It's just 1 away, so I could say 60 minus 1. So again, I could say 8 times 60, and then 8 times 1. And I know that, let me move this up, 8 times 60 is 480, and 8 times 1 is 1. So if I minus 480 minus 1, I'm going to get, oops, sorry about that, 8 times 1 is not 1. 8 times 1 is 8. So if I minus 480 minus 8, then I'm going to get 472. So again, I get the same thing. It just helps you do it mentally in your head. All right, I would like you to do the rest of them on your own. I'll be on the carpet. And remember that you need to use the uh, personal trainer on Think Central. When you're, when you're finished, remember to click the turn in button. If you have any questions, I'm on the carpet. Good luck.